So now I'm just going to show you one of these craft houses by Iwako. So if you can find these in a store near you, I found mine in an Asian shop near me. They're very expensive if you try to ship them, but they are available online from tokyocentral.com. And Iwako also has a site, but again, I got mine from one of the local Asian stores. You could probably make one of your own if you had some cardboard. This is just cardboard pieces. And then you can purchase the erasers separately. They do sell these erasers on Amazon Prime. Iwako erasers. So you can see how you can fold them and then you can just make a little building. But for mine, I'm just going to use the pictures on mine. So you could even print out little pictures for yours if you wanted to do the same thing. Or make your own. So for mine, I took one of my panel pieces, the large one, and instead of folding it in half like I did for the doll rooms, I'm going to take and lengthwise fold it in half lengthwise. And then I'm going to cut it right down the center lengthwise. Then I have two long rectangular panel pieces that measure 18 inches by 6 inches. One for the back wall and then one for the bottom panel. And then I wanted to make some walls so what I did was I took a third panel piece so I have one for the bottom, one for the back wall and then for the dividing walls I took a third panel piece and then you're going to take and cut into six inch by six inch squares. So we already know it's six inches in height so now in length I want six inches. So I'm just going to measure six inches and then cut a square So now I have a 6 inch by 6 inch square and then this one will be sewn as a divider panel. So you'll need three of these which will cut perfectly from that third panel. So you'll have three 6 inch squares. So now I have three 6 inch squares and two of the longer panels. And that way I'll have dividers for the cake shop, one for the little zoo, and then one for the little log cabin. So if you're making your little cake shop or other little stores, and you want these longer panels too, I started with a chain of 58 for the longer panel. And then I made nine total rows of one double crochet in every stitch. And that's for the longer panel. And then for the six inch squares for the stores, I made panels where you start with a chain of 22. And then you also make a total of nine rows to cover the squares. So for mine, I'm using a darker blue for the outside and then I'm going to use a lighter blue for the inside of the stores. For the front of the house, you can find your favorite picture and cut it out for the windows and then you can use your hot glue gun just to glue this to the front of the house. So you just grab your hot glue gun, make sure that you have the windows even on both sides, but you can see that it worked perfectly. I really like how the windows look on the front with the door. So the glue gun works great and my glue gun came with an extra pack of glue sticks with it and you can take and cut out I just printed up pictures of windows that I liked and I cut them out and then just glued them to the front where I wanted to place them. 
So now I want to show you how to join two pieces, two panels. So remember that you need the bottom panel and then the opposite panel. So for this one, I'm using the panel with the door, but you could also use the panel with the window, whichever panel that you want to use for the back wall. So the side walls will go here on this side as well as this side. So this is the bottom panel and then this is the back panel and that's where I'm putting the front door. So take your bottom panel, the rug, and place it in front of you so that the right side is facing up and then take your back panel and lay it right on top. So now I have the right side or the side that I want facing out towards the outside of the dollhouse is facing up. Then I'm going to take and join my crochet hook into the corner of the two panels that I want to join. So just go into the corner panel of both, the stitch on the corner panel. Then you're going to bring up a loop with the same colored yarn as one of the panels. So I'm just using the same colored yarn as my top panel. Then you can chain one and then just tie a knot. And then I'm going to bury my loose yarn end as I crochet. So you're going to chain one and then go into the next stitch of both panels and then bring up a loop and then make a single crochet. And then you're going to make one single crochet into each stitch across. So go ahead and make one single crochet into each top stitch of both panels. So you can see how I'm grabbing the back panel as well, going behind my loose yarn end, and then just making a single crochet. And then that will join the two panels together. Now if you put the door in, or you have the panel with the door in it, then you're not going to have any stitches where the door is at the bottom of the door. So just go into the back panel and just make your single crochet stitches into the back panel until you get across to the other panel on the front and then you just resume crocheting in both panels. Then when you reach the end, you can go ahead and finish off just yarn over and then just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then just take your tapestry needle, put it onto your loose yarn end, and then just bury it right into your work. Just kind of weave it into the crochet work. Then you have the panels attached. So now you can go ahead and attach all of your panels. So I just want to show you real quick how I've attached mine. So here is the floor panel or the carpet. This is the back wall. And then you're going to attach the top panel. This is the panel that goes over the top of the room. Then the side panels will go on either side of the back wall. So here's a side panel, and then here is a side panel. So then when you lift it up, you have the carpet, the side panel, the other side panel, the back wall, and then you have, if you want, you have the top that will come up on top of the room. But I usually just keep the top folded backwards so that the top is open. So you can make yours as simple or as elaborate as you want. So this is one room. So go ahead and make your panels for as many rooms as you want. And then you can hang your windows, decorate the outside how you want. And then I'll show you when you come back how I decorated some of mine. And then to fold them up, the side panels will come in on the back wall. 
then the carpet panel will come up and then the roof panel will come down and then I will show you later how to make the straps for your room. So I just want to show you how my long panel looks. So this is the top. I'm just going to open that up. Here is the bottom. Open that up. And then you have your side panel and the other side panel. And then you have the middle room and you have little buttons. You can put little buttons that I sewed in place. And you don't need the buttonholes because they fit right through the corner. So you can open up your the middle compartments and then you have the side compartments and then the top compartment I usually just keep folded back. So you can see how it's just folded in the back here. And then I have the middle compartments so I just sewed the middle panels. So these middle panels are made the exact same way as the side panel. And then you can glue whatever you want on the outside as well as on the inside with your hot glue gun. And then if you want your side panels to stay in, stay in place, you can sew a little button and then use the corner as a little buttonhole, so the corner of the side panel. And then you have a little decoration as well as a little button and it'll hold the side panel in place. And then also, what's fun about these middle panels is you can either use the buttonhole to hold the panel in place, but I also made it so you could fold it back and make the rooms larger if you want. So if you want this room to be larger, you can fold back one of the side panels and button it in place. Or if you want the other room larger, you can button this one in place. So I just sewed a button right onto the floor panel and then you can button this middle panel in place and then you can open up and make the little cabin portion. I made this into a little cabin room and then the other side panel you can just take and button in place as well. So you can strategically place your buttons wherever you want and design it how you want. So now I have a larger room here and then a smaller room here. So that's the fun that you can have with this one and if you wanted to you could just unbutton it and then just make one large room. So you have fun with your panels however you want to create them. So this was just an idea that I had on one of mine if you like this idea. So if you're making the store with the cake shop and the little log cabin then you're going to need three panels that are 18 by 6 inches and you're going to need four of the six inch by six inch squares. So you have one on the side here and then two on the inside and then you have one on the other side. To make the 18 by six inch panel you'll start with a chain of 58 and then you're going to make nine total rows of one double crochet in every stitch to make one of the 18 by 6 inch panels. And then for the 6 inch by 6 inch square, you're going to start with a chain of 22 and then you need a total of nine rows of one double crochet in every stitch. So if you're making the container box, this is my container box. It's not finished yet, but I want to show it to you so far. You're going to need one of the top panels and then you'll need a bottom panel. So to make the top and bottom panel, you're going, they're going to be 18 inches by 12 inches in size and you start with a chain of 66 and then you'll need 19 total rows of one double crochet in every stitch. Then you're going to need a side panel a long side panel for the front and then a long side panel for the back and then I don't have it on yet but you're also going to need a long side panel for the top so it'll fold over the top of the container so you're going to need three of the long side panels and these long panels you start with a chain of 
a chain of 16 and then you need a total of 29 rows of one double crochet in every stitch and again you'll need three of these panels one for the front and remember that each panel has a front and back so for each panel you need two of these so that you'll crochet together so you will need one for the front you will need one for the back of the container and then you'll need one for the lid which I haven't made yet but I'll show to you after I make it is going to crochet I'm gonna crochet it right to here to the front of the top lid then you're going to need a side a smaller side panel on this one side and then one on the other side and then when you close the lid you're also going to need another one for the top lid so you're going to need two for each side of these smaller side panels now these smaller side panels they measure 12 inches by 4 inches and you're going to start with the chain of 16 but for the smaller panels you only need one double crochet in a total of 19 rows so you're going to need two panels and remember each panel has a front and back so you'll need two, one for the side and then one for the lid and then one for the side and then one for the lid now you're also going to need some for the inside for dividers so for the width divider I'm going to use two and then for the length I'm going to have different sized ones so for the middle I made two additional panels the same size as the side panels so you'll need a total of six of these side panels so if you include the front and the back remember for one panel you'll need two of them for one panel so I'm, I'm talking about a completed panel. You'll need two for the one side, one for the side, and then one for the lid. And then two on this side, one for the side and one for the lid. And then two panel dividers for the inside that are the same size. So again, these measure 12 inches by 4 inches. And you start with the chain of 16. And you need a total of 19 rows of one double crochet in every stitch and then you could see how I crocheted all the sides together so I chose a little light orange for the inside and then on the outside I have a light pink so I had fun with the colors and so I have a bottom panel and then I crocheted the long side panel here to the front and then I also crocheted it to the back and remember your ridge crochet ridge should all be on the same size side so here's the crochet ridge and I chose to have my crochet ridge on the right side of the container so it's actually on the outside this is the right side that I'm going to have showing and then this is the inside so I like the ridge on the outside so I crocheted it so that the ridge, ridge is always on the outside so you can see how I crocheted this front panel to the bottom panel as well as the side panel and the back and the other side and then for the lid you only want it to be on one of the long sides and then when you come back I'll show you how I crocheted the top lid the side the front and the other side and as well as the dividers when I put them inside so that's what it looks like so far and then now for the lid I didn't put the ridge on the outside so that was the only exception I put the ridge on the inside for the lid so this is what it looks like now you can see that on the lid I put the two sides and the front portion and the lid folds right over and covers the container on the inside you can see how I'm creating compartments so I have the side panels the same size as the side panels I used as dividers in the center to separate and I'm going to make one more divider right here here's the divider that I'm going to be placing in there and then you just sew it to the back where you want to place it and then also sew it to the bottom of the container and then you have these smaller dividers that you put in for the size that you want for the particular doll part that you're trying to protect. 
So you can create whatever size dividers that you want. Now you know how to size your starting chain to cover the plastic piece. Here I have several other different sized pieces that I'm going to be using and my starting chain would be for the width and remember the starting chain would be almost as big as the divider that you're making and then you just make the number of rows that you need to completely cover the plastic divider. Then for my lids you may need a different size for your lid but for this particular lid that I made I'm going to be making it to cover that portion and for that one particular divider I started with a chain of 22 and I made 13 rows of one double crochet in every stitch. So then for the compartment lid inside I'm taking and sewing the back of the compartment lid to the back of the container and I'm just going to sew along the back edge that way you'll be able to open up now for mine I'm sewing it to the back ridge of the container so that you can't see the stitches on the right side so if you want to sew all the way through I would recommend using the same colored yarn as the stitch that you're stitching it to if it's showing on the outside. So this on the back side is a pink, the glitter pink. So if you're not going to sew it to the ridge like I am, because I'm using my purple yarn and I'm sewing it to the ridge so you won't see it on the right side. But if you don't want to worry about that, then you would just use your pink glitter. So in other words, just be careful when you're sewing this along the back side that on the right side you don't see the purple stitches if you're using the same colored yarn as your container lid. So then you should have a nice container lid and this will keep your stuff from falling out. And what I like about making this is I can make my containers the size that I want. So, But if you can purchase one that would fit all your stuff um, and has the large container sizes to fit all of your doll items then you can just get one of those but if you want to make your own this is how I made mine and now that I have the lid in place in the back I'm going to put buttons here to hold it in place and I have my mix of buttons I just bought this inexpensive pack of buttons from Walmart and they come in all kinds of different colors and I'm going to use the little purple ones so I'm going to use two of these purple ones to hold this top container in place. So I'm just going to use one of my slender tapestry needles. I need to get a new DMC yarn threader. My hook is bent, but it still works until I can get a new one. But you just put the hook through the eye of the slender needle that will fit through the buttonhole. I'm just going to hook the yarn and then bring it back through. My hook is bent. There we go. So I got it back through the eye and then I just kind of jiggle it up and down to get the yarn through. And then it's ready to sew your button in place. So I'm going to sew one button here and then one button on the other side. And you don't need button holes if you made your container covers the same way that I did because the container covers have spaces between, let me just jiggle this through, so here you can see that in the corner you have a space there that can act as a buttonhole and it works perfectly. And with these, with the yarn that you use, you only need to go through once, which is why I like to use the yarn with my tapestry needle to sew it in place. And then I'm just going to sew a couple of, or tie a couple of knots around five knots or six because I'm not going to bury the loose yarn end I'm just going to trim trim the loose yarn ends and the knots will bury your loose yarn ends for you so if you make multiple knots and then you can just trim it and then you have one button in place this is what it'll look like on the other side and then you're just going to put another button on the opposite side so now I have both of my buttons in place and 
you can take and just use the spaces on each corner to close the compartment lid. So there's one. And then here's the other one. So I would recommend making these compartments after you have all of the doll items that you know that you're going to put into the dollhouse. And you can see how this holds nicely. And then that will keep the items from coming out when you carry the chest or the container. So you're going to create compartments for each to cover each of your dividers that you created for the furniture. And when you come back, I'll show you what mine looks like. So for my doll suitcase, I added a compartment on the back. Actually, it's on the lid. So the lid portion, I added a back compartment. And all I did was make the same size as one of the longer panels, except I made it a little bit shorter. And I only made one of the crochet panels and then I sewed it all around except for the top and then I placed a button that one of the double crochet holes will act as like a buttonhole and then you can just close that. So that's optional if you want to do that for yours. To add stability I made these little button so I used one of the dividers actually I made four dividers and I use them as button straps and they just act for to make your suitcase stronger so you can see that I attached one two of them for the top and then two for the sides and that holds the lid in place and then for the straps if you like how I made the straps you need to attach the straps to the side of the suitcase so not to the opening you just attach it to the side and to make these straps I started with a chain of seven and then made a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook and then one double crochet in every stitch back across to have five stitch total for the width of the strap and then I made one double crochet in every stitch for 15 rows and I made two of them so I attached one on this side and then one on the opposite side then to open the suitcase you just need to unbutton. So for my buttons, the buttonhole is just the corner of the divider strap. So you can see how I undid all of the button straps. And my button straps measure 4 inches by 5 inches each. And then once I open the lid, this is the top portion. So you can see that on the top portion, that is where I put my extra compartment. So it's right on the lid. And then on the inside, I have little flaps that you can unbutton that hold the doll items in place. And you can decide if you want to leave some of the compartments open. Eventually, I'm probably going to put another compartment lid over this portion. But for now, I don't have one. So you would make the compartment lid the exact same way as you did for the others. So for mine, I'm just going to make one long one that would be sitting just like this. So I would cover this plastic mesh the same way that I did for the others. And then I'll put a couple of buttons here to hold it in place. So if you like this method that I made for some of my doll items, all I did was make a panel, one crochet panel, and then I made, I folded it up to create little pockets. And in these pockets, I placed the doll parts. So these are ceramic. That's why I wanted to have it so it wouldn't hit other doll items and potentially break. So they just fit right into these pockets. And then you can just roll it up and then place it into the doll suitcase. So for mine, I made three compartments for the bathtub, for the sink, and then for the toilet. So then it's all protected, and then I can just kind of roll it. And then this top portion, where I didn't make any pockets, 
will just sit on top of any other doll items that you have in your doll suitcase.